everyone! Today we're looking at how you can create an amazing magic power system in your manga or novel. Let's get straight into the video. So first of all, what is a magic power system? When you're creating systems in your story which involve characters using magic or powerful abilities, then it means you'll need a magic system to help you understand those characters' abilities and how to present them in your story. So to get started in this video on developing magic power systems, we first need to look at Brandon Sanderson's Three Laws of Magic. I think this is a great start to better understanding magic systems and learning how to present them and develop the magical abilities within them. These laws of magic are as follows. Number one. An author's ability to solve conflict with magic is directly proportional to how well the reader understands said magic. It is much more effective and exciting in a story to show your character resolving situations with magic that the audience also understands, and it makes them feel like they are going on that magical journey along with your characters. Number 2. Limitations are always more important than powers. This may seem counterintuitive, but limitations are more important than powers, and here's why. When you're creating a story, it's much more interesting to see what creative ways your character can resolve situations through the limited magical abilities they have, rather than being really overpowered and being able to resolve every situation. Even if your character does have a lot of powers and is rather overpowered, they should still have some limitations that makes it more interesting when they do use those abilities. Number 3. Expand on what you already have before adding something new. Before adding anything new to your magic system, expand on what you have already. It is better to have a more simplified system with a more focus on the magical abilities and powers within it, rather than a really overcomplicated system which has multiple abilities and powers which may get confusing in the long run. You want to ensure that your magic power system enhances the story you're telling and doesn't distract from it. So by expanding on what you already have before adding new things, you can ensure that your system remains simplified enough so that it can fit into the story you're telling. You want to find a good balance of both when you're creating a magic system in order to be able to present that magic in the world and the story you're telling. So now that we have looked at more at Brandon Sanderson's Three Laws of Magic, let's go further and talk about how you can apply these techniques and other techniques to creating magic power systems in your manga or novel. Number 1. Establish your world first. Ensure that your audience understands the world from the very beginning. Whether your world is high fantasy or urban fantasy or more supernatural, different genres can change the way you present that world and the magic within that world. The amount of magic that exists in your world will change how complex your magic system needs to be. The way backgrounds and characters are shown can also provide more information about the world and what kind of magic exists within this world. Number 2. Know the purpose for magic in your story. Consider why you have decided to craft this magic system and the purpose of it in telling your manga or novel. A magic power system should help to enhance a story and not distract from it. Understand why the magic exists in your story and how you can use those magical abilities to show the world and the characters in your manga. Also consider how that story can be shown through how your characters are using magical abilities in a normal day in their lives. Whether your character is a magical girl who needs to transform in order to save the day, or your character is someone who uses magical abilities in their daily lives, then consider how you should present that magical system in a way that makes sense for the characters that exist within your story. Number 3. Understand the origin of the magic. Once you have established your world, consider the origins of the magic. Some common origins for a magic system include, it was always there in the world, so your characters always use magic or abilities in their daily life and it's just normal. A character discovers a magical being or an object which grants them powers. Or powers are always granted under a certain condition, for example the character reaches a certain age, or they do a certain quest for example and it's normal in this way. These are some common origins for a magic power system but there may be other origins as well which you may come up with for your book, so really consider where the magic power system is coming from and how this affects characters in your world. Understanding where your character's abilities come from can also help you to better present it in battle scenes or moments where they need to use those abilities. Number 4. Divide the magic power system into categories. To make it feel less overwhelming, break your magic power system down into categories. This can also help you to better present your magic power system. Here are some random examples of categories that you could try for a magic power system. Characters could have powers inspired by different types of birds. They could have abilities inspired by different types of crystals. 
Characters could have powers inspired by different types of books. There are so many different categories that you could choose for your character's magical abilities and I really recommend considering different types of categories in order to better understand the power system that you want to create. Once you have created categories for your magic power system, I recommend breaking it down further. Here are some examples of how to break it down further using the previous ideas. For powers inspired by different types of birds, it could only be focused on birds of a particular type such as birds of prey for example. It could also be birds from a particular area or a magical location in your story. This can help to further break it down so that it is easier to present that power system. For powers inspired by different types of crystals, the magic could only be from crystals of a particular location for example. For powers inspired by different types of books, we could break this down further by saying it's books in a particular location or magical books created by a specific magic character in your world. Breaking down a magic power system into categories can help you better understand how to present it and also better understand how characters may use their abilities and powers. I recommend that along with breaking it down into categories, you could also consider how those different categories look. Maybe you use a colour coding system for example. Maybe different abilities have different colours for example, or characters may wear different outfits inspired by what you are basing that power system on. Number 5. Laws and Limitations Understand the limitations of a magic system. For storytelling purposes, it's better to focus on your character's limitations with their magical abilities rather than making them really overpowered and this is because it's more interesting to see how a character resolves a situation through their limited magical abilities rather than being able to resolve any situation through overpowered abilities. So let's talk about some limitations that you could have that will make your character's magical abilities more interesting when they need to use those abilities or techniques. Powers could only be used for a certain amount of time before they weaken the character. It may take a certain skill level or a technique to use the magical abilities. Characters may need to be in a certain location to use the magical powers. Characters may need to use a certain object like a wand to use the magical powers. Ensuring that your character's abilities have limitations means that you can present those abilities and powers in more unique ways. Number 6. Consider the appearance of the magic. For the sake of design in a manga, consider the appearance of that magic and how it looks when you draw it. Do you draw it in a really detailed and powerful way or is it more subtle? Does your character need to use a certain item in order to wield the magic, such as a wand or a staff for example? When they use the magic, how does it look like through your artwork? I highly recommend researching other manga where characters use magical abilities. You may draw sparkles for example if your manga is really bright or colourful or you may simply show more of the results of them using their magical abilities rather than the magic itself. For example maybe they leave a lot of destruction after they've used it for example. If you have transformation sequences in your manga also you can consider how that might look when you are drawing it. It can really help you when illustrating the manga pages if you better understand how that magic will look on the page. Number 7. Show the magic through story and art. Rather than explaining your magic system in detail to an audience, which may feel a little overwhelming at first, it can be better to present that magic system slowly through the story. A great way to do this is to allow the audience to discover that magic system for themselves. You can do this by showing what it is like for characters in your story using these abilities. So whether your character has just gotten these abilities, maybe they're a magical girl and they have just gone, gotten these abilities, they would be learning more about their magical powers along with the reader. And you can use that as an opportunity to show how they use their powers as they are learning. For other characters, maybe these magical abilities are normal in your world and your characters will be using their magical powers in their daily lives. Here are some further examples of how you can show magic in your world through the story and art. Supernatural characters may exist in the world which you can draw. Characters may use magic in their daily lives. Characters may have different ways of wielding their magical abilities or have a magical object which can also present those magical abilities. Help the audience understand the magic power system by presenting how your characters use those abilities in your story. Number 8. Keep it simple. Try not to overcomplicate things and make it too difficult on yourself. It's better to focus on a more simplified magic system that enhances the story you're telling rather than something overcomplicated that may distract from the story you're telling. 
So always keep in mind that the magic system does not have to be detailed, but it can help you to better understand how you can present that magic and use that power system to show how your character uses those abilities within your story. Thank you so much for joining me in today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please let me know in the comment section down below. Let me know more about what magic power systems you're creating in your story. I would love to hear your thoughts. Make sure to visit my website minaiscross.com for free resources which you can apply to your story and also courses with more detailed lessons. Again, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing day and I will see you in the next video. Bye!